bringing you key insights, tips, and advice from the brightest minds in the Canadian franchise industry. This is the Franchise Canada Chats podcast. I'm Angela Cote, your host of the Franchise Canada Chats podcast, where we take you into the world of franchising. Our interviews are with franchisees, franchisors, and industry leaders who give on the pulse expert advice and share their franchising insights and experiences. Hello, Angela Cote here, and I'm excited to bring you today, David Drucker, the president of the UPS Store Canada. And today we're going to be talking about franchise success as an iconic brand. What gets me really excited about this is that I had the, the good fortune to grow up in a, an iconic uh, Canadian brand, M&M Food Market. My dad's the founder. And over the years, we grew to almost 500 locations. And when I learned more about the UPS store, I realized that we've got some similarities in the in the you know the longevity of the business and a uh, number of units open so I'm, I'm really excited to learn more today about the UPS store so welcome David thank you Angela I appreciate it very much glad to be awesome. here awesome well, let's let's give a shout out to the CFA. I, I just I'm thrilled for the work that the CFA does to uh, keep us uh, educated, uh, protect the model, the franchise model, and provide opportunities to network and be together, like the upcoming annual convention. Stoked about that. We'll get to be in person yeah. again. And and also on that note of shout outs, shout out to you the and the UPS store for becoming a new national sponsor. That's really exciting. Thank you so much, Angela. Yeah, the CFA is, is really incredible. And franchising has really been very incredible, to tell you the truth. Um, you know, I've been on the board for a lot of years. I'm actually the incoming chair of the CFA. I'm the chair of the convention this year. So um, there's all kinds of things that, uh, you know, people can do to support. And I think it's important to pay it forward. I think franchising, uh, like you said, I mean, you've been in franchising most of your life. I've been in franchising most of my life being a Rogers wireless franchisee when it was Cantel, Canada's telephone network and stuff like that. Um, so it's important to, to pay it forward. And especially, as you said, being an iconic brand, we're very fortunate. We're very well established. Uh, there's a lot of mentorship that, that goes on through the CFA. So, you know, whether you're looking to become a franchise or whether you're looking to become a franchisor, the Canadian Franchise Association is uh, really an important backbone of our industry in Canada. It's an important industry in Canada. Uh, I think we're the 11th uh, largest contributor. And uh, so it's just it's nice. It's, it's, it's really nice to be in a position where supporting the Canadian Franchise Association and helping Canadians, you know, find the dream of franchising is really a great thing. It's a great place to be. I feel very fortunate. Awesome. We're, we're so aligned on that. And, you know, when I first started the business I have now advising and consulting franchisors, one of the first things my dad said is, have you become a member of the CFA yet? Um, it was like, you've got to become a member. And, and I remember um, Eminem uh, winning, you know, awards over the years for, for different things. And, and I always knew that it was important, but when my dad said that, you know, I got right on board and, and I, I don't know where, I don't know where I would be and where a lot of all the franchise companies would be in Canada without the CFA. So um, yeah, big shout out to the CFA. And I'm, I'm really excited to hear more of your, your history and your story, David, getting into franchising and, and history of the UPS store. So so let's start there. Let's start with the history of the UPS store. And then, you know, how did you end up in that system and, and your background? Sure, Angela. It's actually, uh, so the history is, is, is quite easy. It started in uh, California in the early 80s as an alternative to the U.S. Postal Service um, under mailboxes, et cetera. It grew substantially uh, in early 2000s, 2001, UPS bought mailboxes, et cetera, I made the decision to rebrand to the UPS store in the U.S. in 2003 and then rebranded to the UPS store in Canada in 2005. So coincidentally enough, October 3rd, 2005 was the day of the rebrand in Canada. And it's also my first day with the network. So I came in originally as a franchisee, uh, then became an area franchisee very rapidly. And then a couple of years later, the master license for Canada became available. Uh, and we optioned on that and became the master licensee for Canada. Um, it's a great brand. I mean, I frankly, I, I walked into uh, a UPS store in Hallandale Beach, Florida. The store had been there for many years. I'd been going there for many years, but I suddenly had the need to receive a contract, uh, get it downloaded, get it printed, and get it signed and shipped back. And I drove by and the store had a sign in the window that said, we fax, we print, we ship, we're your office away from home. And the sign had been there for years, but until I really needed it, it didn't like jump out at me. I walked in, the franchisee was awesome. Um, gave me a coupon to go next door for a, 
a Starbucks coffee and he said, oh, when you get back, I'll have everything ready. And I was just smitten with the service. Um, to me, you know, I've been in franchising, I've been in, in customer uh, sales positions all my life. And to me, it's all about relationship. It's all about brand. I don't want to be the cheapest guy on the block. I don't want to be fighting for pennies. I want to fight for relationship. Uh, and that's really what the UPS store does in communities across Canada. Uh, we're very integral parts of our community. We serve generally a, you know, a five kilometer radius around our stores, offering printing services and mailbox services and shipping and packaging services. Really, it's a small business center um, that helps serve that zero to five employee uh, business person who doesn't have a team to rely on. Our franchisees are that local team that they can rely on to help build their business. Um, so it's really quite, quite great. And I haven't looked back on a day. They say, you know, if you enjoy what you do, it's never a job. And I'm lucky. I enjoy what I do. Um, up until the last couple of years, I spent 200 days a year on the road visiting franchisees in the U.S. Uh, I'm a people person, which has been a little hard the last uh, 22 months. But uh, my travel legs are starting up again, thankfully, and we're getting to see people. And, you know, as you said, 2022, hopefully will be a much better year. We're going to have our CFA convention uh, I'm going to be able to get out again into the field and, and be more active. And uh, that's the part that I love because at the end of the day, we are a people business. Um, there's nothing unique that we do. It's the way that we do it. It's being full service in a self-service world. Uh, and that's really the, the joy of the UPS store. And it doesn't help. It doesn't hurt to have a, an iconic brand like UPS. I mean, people walk in the first time they have an expectation of professionalism, reliability. Um, and then it's up to the franchisee after that to, create the relationship that lasts. Um, so we're really quite fortunate. You know, we're sitting currently just under 370 stores open and operating in Canada. Uh, there's over 5,000 in the U.S. So you look at that 10% rule, there's still plenty of room for growth in Canada. Um, and, you know, it's been very, very good for us. We launched a program in 2018 with Walmart Canada. So we're opening up locations inside Walmarts. Uh, we currently have, I believe, 12 open and operating. We have about another 15 in the pipeline. Uh, and that's growing quite rapidly with an expectation of probably about 150 uh, in the larger Walmart stores across Canada. So it's, it's really quite good. And it's amazing because you have the dream of being in business for yourself, but not by yourself. That's really what franchising is to be able to get access to an iconic brand like UPS. You know, you look at iconic brands in the world, Coca-Cola, um, you know, Kellogg's, uh, UPS. So, you know, our average investment is about $185,000 plus roughly $40,000, $50,000 of operating cash flow. So for under $250,000, you're getting access to be part of a, a multi-billion dollar brand. It's, it's quite a, a reasonable exchange. Uh, and it works out really well for our franchisees. You know, we've got a great operating system that's helped us out very much, uh, you know, when COVID hit, um, being able to have uh, our operations team work with our franchisees to make sure that not only our franchisees remain safe, but our customers and our communities remain safe. We're very fortunate. It's quite nice. I just want to jump in on, on that. Thank you for all that information. That's really helpful to understand. And what really um, caught my attention is, it, you know, you, you said it's about the relationship and the people. And it's interesting because I, I, I'm fortunate to get to interview and, and meet and work with a variety of different for types like franchise concepts and you know it's it's one thing like it'd be easy to think um something like a, a dog you know sitting business well that'd be fun and like you know you might have passion for animals or a fitness you're really into fitness and I don't think in your case it's so much about the actual like it is the product but it's the the, the product is really the service if that makes mm -hmm. sense and, and and actually that I again relating back to M&M a little bit that you know our our competitive advantage was our service. You know, I used to, I used to ask people, what is our competitive advantage? Like to the, um, our employees and stuff. And they would say, it's the quality product. And I'm like, mm, you can get quality product other places, yep. but you can't get the service. Like, like that is our secret formula. So uh, that's really cool to hear. I'm excited to hear that, that. And then just that you can have passion for those relationships. And so We'll get in, I don't want to get into this yet, but I'll just drop it in a little bit, just that for people that are thinking of becoming a franchisee, if you have a passion for people, this is a, an example of a business when, for you. 100%. You know, I, I've, again, not in the last couple of years, but before that, we go to a franchise show and people would find out, oh, the president's here. Well, okay, I'm going to take the opportunity. Really, could you tell me what's the secret to success? What's mm -hmm. going to make me the best franchisee? And I, you know, I'll look to my left, I'll look to my right, I'll say, okay, but don't tell anybody. You have to like people 
you have to be able to have a conversation. You have to look them in the eye. You have to smile and you have to be pleasant. And oh yeah, you have to enjoy what you're doing. And they're like, yeah, yeah, I know all that. No, no, really, what's the secret? Okay, let me start over again. See if you're listening. But yeah, that, that's exactly what it is because there is nothing unique that we offer. You could get a photocopy in a, in a shopper's drug mart. You can get a mailbox at Canada Post. You could go ship with another carrier. You know, there's, there's all sorts of different things. What's unique is that we offer it in one location. We offer it in a reliable, professional, clean manner. Uh, and we do so on a relationship basis. Most of our customers are return customers. Our mailbox holders come in two or three times a week. You know, we have commercial address so you can actually register your business instead of, you know, having your business registered to your home. And then Google Earth picks up a picture of you in the backyard and the swimming pool is your business shot. You can actually get a real business address. We, we create lasting relationships. A lot of our customers, you know, are, are, have been customers. I was just popped into one of the stores where my daughters were. Um, and there's a guy there that's been doing photocopies for as long as I can remember, since literally since when I started in 2005. And, you know, you have little conversations. I noticed he was wearing his McGill Redmond jacket. I said, good on you that you still fit into your university jacket. And the gentleman's probably in his early 70s, but he is likely our largest black and white photocopy. He has like a prepaid card because he likes to find books, pull out stuff. And so it, it's all kinds of different things. Sometimes it's a plumber or an electrician that uses our mailboxes. Sometimes it's a person. Sometimes it's someone that wants to do invitations for a party or posters or calendars. We're really a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But the most important part, and I tell our franchisees this every day, you're, you're like a performing artist. You got to smile every day. You got to deliver and whatever it is that the person's coming in for, you got to wow them every day. Even if they're just asking for directions or change because they could be tomorrow's huge customer. We hope you're enjoying this episode so far. Did you know that Franchise Canada has a newsletter sent twice a month that's packed full of fresh franchise opportunities? With Franchise Canada e-news, you get new content from Franchise Canada magazine, franchisee success stories, industry news about CFA members, educational videos all about franchising, and you can keep up to date on the newest episodes of the Franchise Canada Chats podcast that you're listening to right now. Plus, by subscribing to Franchise Canada e-news, you get a free subscription to Franchise Canada magazine. Subscribe now at FranchiseCanada.online. Now, back to the podcast episode you are enjoying. Yeah, if they get that good experience where they, they come in and they, f- they feel good and they might not even be able to put their finger on it, but they leave and there's something about it, then they're going to want to come back. And uh, yeah, I can see how people would build that loyalty. And, and this actually just... Um, hits on how important franchising the model is, is that you've got local owners, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think a lot of people, I'm, I'm sure you are the same. I'm always trying to educate people on the fact that franchise, when you hear the word franchise, you know, some people think that just means a chain of stores. It's like, no, this means local owners that you're supporting in the community. I remember when we, when we opened our first store in Victoria, everybody thought, oh, that's a chain. I don't want to support them. We're like, but we're local owners, you know? So, so let's, let's go a little bit more into, if, if we can just, uh, is there anything else that sets your brand apart? I want, or I want to emphasize what I heard you say. So what sets you apart from the competition? It's, it's all in one store, uh, clean. What else did, just to make sure that we got it's, that. It's, it's, it's service, it's reliability, it's professionalism. Um, and it's consideration and caring. Listen, you know, not every day is a perfect day. Even a company like UPS, they're, they're, you know, industry leading, but that still means that one or two packages out of every hundred is either not going to arrive when it's supposed to, or not going to get where it's supposed to go. Customers going to come back in. They're going to say, Hey, my package didn't arrive. What did you do? They know that it wasn't actually you. What they're really asking is, Hey, can you help me? A lot of places are just going to turn around and say, well, listen, that was yesterday's transaction. Today's today. There's not much I can do. Here's the 1-800 help number. We make sure our franchisees understand that that relationship doesn't end when the cash is tendered. Someone's come to you, they're creating a trust bond. That's what the basis of the business is. That's what keeps people coming back. So, I mean, we've got a great system. Obviously, you know, we're we're talking about 40 years in business. We're talking about over 5,000 locations. We've got great operational guidelines, but, you know, not to steal somebody else's quote, but the secret sauce for what we do is the personality. It's, It's being a human being. It's understanding that you know, someone that's coming in mad is not really mad at you personally. They're mad because something happened. 
they needed to get a, a document somewhere it was important and it didn't happen and they're mad but they're not mad at you they're mad because it didn't happen and what they're really saying is please help me so as long as you can always remember that and that's one of the things we try to keep teaching our franchisees on a daily basis is the empathy it's not the franchisee's side of the counter that matters it's the customer side of the counter that matters and that doesn't mean that you should allow a customer to dump on you. I tell, I tell our franchise regular profanity isn't acceptable and, and violence certainly shouldn't happen. And over the last couple of years, we know that there's been escalations of temper. Sometimes you got to look at a customer and say, listen, I'm here to help you, but maybe you need to step outside for two minutes, take a you know, breath of, of fresh air and come back in. I'm here to help you, but I can't help you when you're doing that. Right. So, so it's, you know, not, it, it, it's a balance. Yeah. It's not, it's not about being a pushover and just doing nope. catering everything to uh, unrealistic expectations. You know, a relationship is, is two sides. They got to be fair with you and you got to be fair with them. And that's, I think, one of the keys of what we do. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Again, back to, you know, it, it's uh, if it was a business that um, like a, a gym, a fitness where you're going in and you've got a membership that you you naturally expect to build a relationship. But I love that you're building relationship in a, in a, a service environment that you might not expect it. That's really, really but, cool. And so with that, what are some of the traits that you look for? Let's talk about franchisees. You said, you know, they have to understand, they have to love people and just have that good personality and, and not personalize things when, uh, when things aren't good. What other uh, traits do you look for in a, a franchisee that helps you know they're going to be a success for themselves? Like anything else, I mean, we go through a pretty rigorous process of initial application, interviews, uh, profiles. But at the end of the day, I mean, they have to, obviously they have to have some hard skills. They have to know how to work the computer. They need to be organized. Um, you know, they need to understand uh, what goes into it. But it really is the personal skills. It really is, um, you know, about getting out, being active in your community, being known in your community, being a personality, being a smile. Um, you know, that franchisee injects that that last 10 percent into the system. And that 10 percent is, you know, the cream at the top that makes it work. Uh, we see a lot of times where, you know, a franchisee doesn't do like we tell them straight out. If you're going to get into our business, there are certain businesses where you pay big money and you can just sit behind the counter. You don't have to do anything. We're not that business. You need to expect to spend about 500 hours per year working on your business, not in your business. You've been in franchising long enough. You've heard that many, many times. That means something as simple as Chamber of Commerce, uh, going to the restaurant that's next door to your store, having lunch and talking to the owner. Just the basic humanity skills, um, that's the stuff that really creates the excellence. Uh, it's not merely about being, you know, having a PhD in, in, in packaging or being able to print the best business card. You need to be able to communicate. You need to be able to make people um, feel that, that link, feel that trust. Because, you know, they're small business people. Chances are the job that you're doing is critical to them being able to earn income that week, which they're going to use to you know, feed their family, send their kid to school, whatever else it is. So our franchisees, as you said, are small business owners from the community dealing with other small business owners from the community. So there's a great one-to-one -one relationship. Very early on, uh, one of my favorite jobs, you know, I'm a car nut and uh, I worked in uh, car audio. And I remember looking at my boss and saying, how do you always know, you know, that we're going in the right direction? He says, it's easy. I'm part of the demographic. I'm a car nut. I love electronics. I understand my customer because I could be my customer. And that's the same thing for our stores. Our franchisees are small business owners from local communities. They have a dream. You know, they, they came to franchising with a dream of doing something more for their family or whatever it may be. And they rely on this to feed their family, pay their mortgage, send their kids to university, whatever else it may be. And that's similar to what our, our customers are. So they really do have a one-to-one -one understanding. It, it's not like, you know, being from Mars and Venus. You're really from... Uh, the same universe as far as that goes. Yeah, I'm, uh, uh, you're speaking my language because I'm such a big um, ambassador of this, you know, franchisees getting out into the community. It's how I built my businesses in like my stores that I had when I was a franchisee. It's how, it's how all, all franchisees that are successful are doing it. It's getting out into the community. You said all the things that I was going to ask you, what are some examples, but you gave them, it was awesome. Like the chamber of commerce and relationships with other business owners. And what, what you find is that, that people want to support you when they like you and you, and yep. you, you, it's a give and take. You help them. You, you tell people to go to their business and vice versa. And 
So um, the, yeah, I think um, that's really helpful because I know a lot of people, you know, they, they're afraid to become a small business owner or become a franchisee um, because, of the, because of the unknown. And, and I mean, you know, as the franchisor or the, you know, the leadership team, you know, you tell them like, here's the things that work. So yep. that's the whole idea. You're going to come into this and we're going to say, go join your chamber or go do this and try that. And another thing that you hit on is that the, that when you said the 500 hours uh, working on the business, I love that. Cause I think a lot of people think that they just, they're just going to go in, turn on a sign and sit there. Like you said, you could spend a bunch of money on marketing. It, like that doesn't work though in this model. Nope. And well, it may work, but it doesn't make sense for the, the bottom line. Yep. Right. Listen, and there, so, are, there are certain, there are certain businesses without naming them that we know that people, you know, go to the drive through three times a day. They don't mind waiting 11 minutes to get to the window to walk away with their double double or whatever it is but it's a different investment level, it's just different participation level. Personally, for me, it's always been, I'd li I like a relationship business because I can control the relationship. There's lots of things you can't control, but you can certainly control you know, how you deal with people, the tone that you set for your staff and, and, and stuff like that. And you know, I think you touched on also, franchising is, is a very delicate balance. You need, to, you need to be entrepreneurial enough to run your own business but you also need to understand that you're part of a bigger picture and a team and that what you do has a ripple effect. This isn't, you know, an independent business where I can decide to do whatever I want. And, you know, caveat emperor doesn't make a difference who, who it affects. It's a team. So you've got to be an entrepreneur. You've got to be, you know, self-motivated and self-started. But you also have to understand that there's guidelines that you have to follow. And those guidelines have been set up over years of experience. So you don't have to be the bleeding edge finding out what works and what doesn't work. Not that there isn't something new that comes along. I mean, it's an exciting business. There's something new every day. But a lot of what you're seeing is stuff that someone else has seen. And you can pick up the phone and call a franchise business consultant or call the, the home office and say, hey, you know, at one point in time, a couple of years ago, we were, we were moving the Olympic torch across Canada as they went from city to city each night. So, you know, at the end of the day, it came into a store. We had to wrap that thing because you didn't want it to break in transit. And a special truck came and picked it up. It hit an airplane and it made the next city for the next morning when they were doing the lighting. So there's all sorts of cool things like that. So, uh, you know, it, it is new and it is exciting. But at the end of the day, wrapping that, that torch was not all that different from wrapping a vase or whatever else it is. You just got to make sure that you do it properly. And, you know, the franchise teaches you how to do that. Yeah. And, and I think another way that you scratch the entrepreneurial itch is the marketing efforts in the community like that. That's where I always found that we could get creative and, and just whatever we, we could think of to get people in the door, as long as it wasn't uh, inappropriate for the brand or anything like that. Yep. Um, okay. So let's, so that's awesome. And, and we've gotten a good sense of, you know, if somebody's thinking, Oh, I might want to become a franchisee, but what does the typical day look like for franchisees? Like what kind of, and, and what kind of support do you provide ongoing? So I think every day is, is fresh. I mean, it, it's not, you know, we get our normal rushes and, and ebbs and flows. You know, you, there's a certain amount of people that, you know, we open up at 9 a.m. The stores are open from 9 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. Monday to Friday, Saturday, 10 to 3 consistently. Some are open beyond that. So you always have a couple of people, three, four, five people waiting for you to open in the morning. Um, then again, around lunchtime. And then again, around three o'clock in the afternoon before the 5 p.m. pickup and stuff like that. But it's different. You could be doing... Uh, wedding invitations one day, you could be doing business cards the next, you could be packing up, um, you know, someone's china set to ship to a relative. Um, it's, it's truly interesting, because you're dealing with people. So to me that, you know, I, I talk to our franchisees on a regular basis, the tasks aren't redundant, because the people aren't always the same. Um, so it's interesting. And we have, as I said, we have the franchise business consultants, the people at the home office, our area support people, uh, our operations support people, and the franchisees support one another. I mean, they're a great team. As I would mentioned earlier, you're part of something bigger. So, you know, maybe you're not sure which form you need to ship tea to some country, but, you know, you can either call a hotline or you can call another franchisee that's been in the system for 11 years and say, hey, I got to do this. Is this a prohibited item or can I do this? Or what's the best way to do this? It's, it's you know, it's a team effort and it's, it's nice. It's nice, I think, knowing that you're not all on your own. And for me, it's, I, like I've always been involved in franchising in one way or another. And that's why I think the Canadian Franchise Association is so important, especially after the last two years that we've had. People are leaving corporate businesses. They don't want to be employee 20,299 anymore. They want to do something for themselves. And the Canadian Franchise Association really, I mean, 
part of the, the objective is to protect franchising in Canada, but the other part of it is to grow franchising in Canada, to make sure that Canadians are aware of the opportunities. You know, we've got look for a franchise, we've got sites available, we've got webinars. You know, for us, um, franchise development is probably easier than most because of our history. COVID, we decided, you know, we woke up in April and said, okay, we got to do something because obviously we're not going to the hotels. We've been doing Zoom webinars. And I mean, they're amazing. We're getting 300 people registering for a webinar. We're getting 75, 80 of them showing up for the actual webinar. We've got 220 other people that we've got for email leads. Pre-COVID, you spent money booking a, you know, a GTA hotel room to hopefully have 40 people show up and, and see where it goes. So you know, we've adapted really well, which is part of being an iconic brand. We knew what to do. We had the technology in place. We had the team in place. It's, it's, it's been really, really great. And it's been great for the franchisees. They've become a much more cohesive group. We did, you know, Zoom town halls and stuff like that. Um, they say that, you know, it's the COVID was, will go down in history as one of the great accelerators. Uh, and it's true because, you know, we couldn't get our franchisees necessarily to get involved in webinars uh, two years ago. Now they're all over it. Everyone, everyone has a webcam. I mean, my 86-year-old father knows how to Zoom. So it, 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 it's wonderful. And franchising is great for that. As a community, franchising came together really well. The CFA, uh, you know, I, I hosted on behalf of the CFA several sessions about, you know, how to deal with this, what's keeping you up at night. It's great. It's, it's, it's being part of a community that really cares about one another. I think franchising... As I said, I've been in it all my life and I love it and I look forward to paying it forward. I'm going to be the incoming chair of the CFA for the next two years. Sherry, who's the president and I, hopefully are going to be able to travel across Canada to help grow the membership and help grow the awareness because uh, I think it's critical and I love it. And I love the fact that we're at a point in time where I'm able to do that. Yeah, the, the CFA is amazing and I love and I appreciate your efforts and, and the upcoming efforts that you, you're going to have in that role. I Yeah, I just I really want to emphasize the I, I'm with you on that, you know, the pandemic, having the community of franchising come together has was incredible and it still is, you know, it, and you're right, it, it, it sped up the, the collaboration and the technology, all these things. And um, really want to emphasize when it comes to being a, a franchisee that like the, the businesses that were that were franchised had each other to, to talk to and, and like how do you get the equipment and how do you get financing and all that well the answer we just work together and then we find the answer versus a small business owner independently on their own trying to figure that out is it's night and day so yeah i i this has been i'm i'm stoked right now david because i like i love franchising okay if, for anybody that's watching on a video right now i'm holding that was up Lou's my christmas gift wasn't it yeah, this is my CFA uh, mug that says I love franchising and it's sort of nerdy, but I also, but I, but I mean it because it is such a great model. And it's such a great way for people to get out of, you know, jobs they're not happy and thriving in and to take control and to build an asset, you know, to be able to build an asset instead of just working for the man. No, I and mean, multi-generational. A lot of our franchisees have handed it off to the kids and stuff like that. So it's, yeah, it's really and actually, nice. yeah. And something I'm seeing too is even younger generations becoming franchisees on their own and realizing, Hey, I can do this. You know, like, I guess I was 25 when I started and, and, and it worked out all right. Um, I just think it just takes, it takes having the right traits, the right DNA, like we talked about. Yeah. I mean, at the end of yeah. the day, franchising is a people business and uh, you know, the CFA, I think does a, a great job. If you're looking for more information, go to the CFA.ca. If you're looking for more information on us, you can go to the UPS store.ca. You know, I, I look forward, we get a lot of uh, applicants. On average, we award about 15 new stores per year and do about 30 transfers per year. And, and that's really a small percentage of the applicants that we want. We have, thankfully, the opportunity to award to the people who really have um, the best people skills and the, and the best success. We're, we've had a great few years. We're very fortunate to have been in essential service during COVID, um, but we were also very operationally prepared for it. It, it really worked out uh, reasonably well, and hopefully it will continue to being important in Canadian communities um, is something that I don't see ever changing. Yeah. And that's, that's, I love that there's purpose behind this, even though it's, it's um, not a, a, you don't think of maybe on the surface as, you know, if it's a senior caregiving, you might think purpose a little more, but in this case, the purpose is the, the, the people and the relationships and the job opportunities that are created and all that. So um, that's just awesome. And um 
So I just wanna, I wanna, let's just make sure we got your, the, the website again, if people are interested in learning more about the UPS sure. or whether, that, whether from a consumer level or becoming a franchisee, what was that website? The upsstore.ca. Um, okay. Our franchisees are a great group of people. I wanna give a shout out to them. They've done a great job during COVID. You know, we have franchisees who did free posters for restaurants and they were reopening, uh, free faxing for people when they were stuck out of their offices. It's, it's about people helping people. It's really, um, as I said, when I started, I am fortunate that I, you know, I love what I do. And I like to believe that most of our franchisees love what they do. They come in with a smile every day, or at least most days. Yeah, I mean, yeah, most days. And if, and if they want to move on, like you said, they can, they can sell the business. And, yeah. and that's we'll another just. I, I, you know, I love that, you know, French, a uh, prospective franchisee can buy an already running business then. So come talk to the UPS store and you can find um, opportunities where the business is already running potentially. And, and that we call that transfers in, in franchising. Yep. So that's really cool. So awesome. And thank you again to, to you, the UPS store for, for participating in this sponsored episode and, and for being this new national sponsor of the CFA. So I look forward to seeing you in April in, uh, I'm thinking it is Ottawa, 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 Ottawa yeah, Ottawa. Ottawa for the national convention. So um, I've learned so much today, David. Thank you so much for the interview and I'll see you soon. Thanks a lot, Angela. I really appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for listening. For more franchising resources, including how-to articles, expert advice, franchisee success stories, and franchise opportunities, visit franchisecanada.online. Don't forget to subscribe to Franchise Canada e-news while you're there. You can also learn more about franchising at cfa.ca and connect with specific franchise opportunities at lookforafranchise.ca. Now go be awesome.